This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I wanted to get into the nitty-gritty, the details of what to look for when buying land in Florida. Because it seems like there's a lot of people that really want to move here, and are moving here, and it's for good reason. This, if you're into growing tropical fruit trees, this could be your tropical fruit growing Eden. Without basically any work but you got to find the land first and land isn't always easy to come by and unless you inherit it or you or you know have money already which wasn't the case with me I had to like buy and sell land and that's how I made my money uh, I always had horses I had like five horses in my entire adult life and uh, we had to have land to like hold our horses so and it started with basically no money so the quality of our land wasn't always the best <clears throat> but i didn't stay there long i fixed it and sold it so that's kind of what you have to do at least that's what i had to do maybe maybe you won't have to do that but you can make your own money buying and selling land and in florida it's been going on for a long time and like this lot next door that's a lawn that isn't a pond Uh, half of it's underwater. Uh, I love it because little frogs, frogs, the frogs that live over here go over there and lay eggs. And then the little frogs go up into these trees. And uh, this lot, they like were prided themselves because they mo they cut all the lawn and they they cut all the palm fronds. This was like last month. And then they cut down a bunch of giant, like the oldest live oak tree and um, the, uh, some of the biggest pine trees, so hundreds of year old trees that they decided weren't needed. They, they've only owned this property for like six months. This lot is sold three times in a year, I think, or it's working on its third time. Uh, there's no house on it. And, uh, but the first thing I look for is trees. And you can't really have a hundred percent success unless you see that there's ancient trees growing on it and so that's what I look for this place was kind of loaded with beautiful ancient live oak trees um, that were dying because it had been a lawn for 60 years the back half was a horse pasture which is equally as bad that they didn't rotate on and uh the front half was a lawn with large old oak trees which were slowly dying from the mowing of the lawn so when you mow your lawn it turns into standing water in september or august so i like to go look at the land so i look for the oak trees and then i look at the land and when it, at the monsoon season which is august september late july for sure it usually starts before june around June, maybe the second week in June sometimes, but that's when the rain starts. And a lot of times it's in May, could be earlier, but then it continues all the way until hopefully December. Starts lightening out. So if you look at it in September, you could see what the water conditions are on it. And this property used to be standing water everywhere. It was lawn ponds. The frogs didn't lay their eggs in them because, I don't know, I think they got too hot. <clears throat> Maybe they laid their eggs in there, I don't know. They used to do the frog noises after heavy rains here, but it, that, it happens around us now. We kind of get the frog noises year round, but we get that there's big, huge, like, after it's been raining and the, all the water table is like an inch below the ground, or your lawn is underground underwater that's when the frogs come out at night around here uh, you know this property was named frog valley tropical fruit farm because vero beach was the frog gigging capital of florida uh, before they put the canals in to drain water so 
it, it seems like all this tree property, you know, the old growth, old trees is mostly snapped up. And what's available in this county, Indian River County, is uh, um, is the uh, strip property, you know, the like raw land. And it's mostly like around Felsmere inland. So it changes from 10A to 9B at like 66th Avenue here east. So if you're looking on the other side of Highway 95, there's a good chance it's going to freeze. I think you can do the tropicals, but you got to be prepared for some setbacks. That's just part of what how it is when you grow in 9b but you can do it in florida i know people that do it so i know it's possible and this got down to really cold and froze for the first time ever but most of our stuff didn't get affected the only areas that got affected were the areas where i knew the soil was compacted because it still had standing water in it uh five years after i've been here and after i've implemented the no mow. I, I thought it was fixed, but this area was historically a area that uh, last summer even had standing water that killed my favorite plant at the moment. Uh, I think it was a J33 jackfruit or something like that. But anyway, it killed it and I, I, was, I was livid. Um, so, cause I didn't notice that the water was still like eight inches in the tall grass. This is right in front of the house. That's why this is a bad area. So it's really important to check all your property, but you can fix those areas. You fix them. I fixed it with, I'm, I added a vegetable garden here. So I planted all my vegetables last winter here and I had added a lot of compost, adding lots of quality compost. And planting vegetables in it mostly fixed this but i also buried one of my biodynamic 500 horns just below the skin of the soil or you know this i just yeah the skin of the, the the cover of the soil that lives is growing on here so there's like a i don't know it's like three inches that's like dirt and uh, roots and plants and and that kind of lifts up i know people have walked across uh areas that of untouched soil where it like is so fluffy that you sink in it that's the skin of the soil here and so i would look for that that skin kind of lifts up above the we you know the standing water it lifts up above it lifts itself up i'm sure due to the microbial life um so that it doesn't uh so that it does, is not below the water. Now, when you have trails that you walk on all the time, those areas will hold water, but it's kind of minimal. It can only hold it as deep as the skin of the soil because the skin of the soil isn't going to get covered. So if your skin of the soil is like three inches, your trail might have two inches of water on it. Just the trail, not right next door to it. And this area has some spots where I'm... It has like low spots, I guess, because they're like a little bit of standing water, just like like right here. But it's only like a half inch thick, deep now. Whereas before it was six inches. And before that it was eight inches of lawn underneath and it would get really hot. So the skin of the soil, I would check when looking for property, I would check the skin of the soil. So if somebody's been mowing it all the time, I would know that that's going to be a compacted conditions. And so definitely you have to look at it after it's been raining for a while. We got like six inches of rain in an hour last night. So this is a perfect day to, to look if there's standing water. All your compacted issues can be fixed in Florida. Or they fix themselves. You just have to add some compost and grow some diversity in it and stay off of it, really. So don't walk on it. Don't mow it. Don't, like, stay off of it. 
this is this area is fixed. I buried the biodynamic horn just below the skin of the soil in all my areas that have been trouble spots. And so far I haven't been able to detect any standing water issues in those areas that I had not done a vegetable garden in that were just as bad as the area that I just showed you. So I'll try to walk back there. So this is the path I mow from to the front of the property, to the back of the property. And we can drive our tractor on it if we have to. And this used to be a low spot that was under four inches of rain. And now the only area that's kind of standing water is where the ta tractor tires. This is right here, there's no standing water. This is where the tractor tire was. This is where the other tractor tire was. This is the middle. So it's only where the tractor tires go. That's like your horse, your deer trails. And we got six inches of rain last night. You saw my neighbor's property. That's what happened here it was the same issues. So it can be fixed. So it seems like all these properties that are available it's a tractor tire. Cacao can handle standing water. It seems like most of the plants can, as long as it's not too deep and it doesn't get too hot. I think it's the heat that gets them. If you have the biology, the anaerobic biology can like help your plants su succeed. Um, these microbes, I watch a video on microbiology. Um, a, the stomach and its connection to the brain. And they didn't really hit on this, but at the very end of it, she said just a very short little thing that they've recently discovered that natural microbes from the soil can combat Alzheimer uh, neur neural functions or like there's something that builds up on the neurons of the brain and it fights that it, it degrades it so they test it in nematodes and mice and so it's not really it's like something recently found all this stuff is just now being found out that's why we really need to focus on the microbes in the soil and stop killing them all like they've done with our citrus here in Florida. And now the citrus trees only live on average of 15 years rather than 75 to 100. Same thing's happening to us because, you know, they're feeding us that crap. So the soil microbes are really important and the land that's available seems to be in citrus areas. So what I look for after I look at first, I mean, you can see this right off is like whether it has those ditches that indicate it was an old citrus growth. Because everyone around Florida, this part of Florida, they use their chemicals. Just so you know, you gotta be aware. The citrus grove areas, they spray overhead chemicals. It's just so sad because these citrus areas where people I think probably are buying land probably could turn Florida back. They, they could fix the problems that the tropical fruit orange people caused with the other tropical fruits grown naturally. They, uh, they could fix that problem. So buying that land and converting it into regenerative farm is going to heal it because soil has a memory and you can stack uh, microbes. You can populate microbes with native biology. That's why I'm selling biodynamic horn. I have to make those on the 22nd. Of course, I have my biodynamic uh, in-person interview on the 22nd. And I'm supposed to make like 100 biodynamic horns. And I'm going on vacation to California and Santa Monica next week for four days. So... I'm going to not be here to collect the manure. Hopefully it will be done right. So anyway, it's like, oh, yeah, we make microbes. Crap microbes. <laughs> they work. <laughs>
the microbes. You need the microbes in the soil because that's where your human health starts. The microbes grow into your plant and you're supposed to consume them. You're not supposed to be consuming the synthetic nitrogen. You're not supposed to be consuming the insecticides and the fungicides and the herbicides. Those are all microbiome killing substances that we created to make a dollar. That's the only thing regenerative about that industry is it is your insured continuous money flow to yourself by providing the chemicals and the pills at everything else's expense. I mean, if you're watching this, you already know this. I, I just can't believe how ignorant and obvious this is to everyone to be destroying the microbes in the soil. Don't even look at them. Don't even look at the microbes. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill all the microbes in the cow and kill all the microbes in the people. That way you can make medicine. Anyway, so they spray... I just tried to get on a rant, didn't I? So they spray the... Uh, the... Uh, old orange groves and the, the orange groves with overhead uh, planes. They fly over and they spray your property with uh, microbe killing chemicals. They, people around here, they all use glyphosate. They kind of slowed down on that. I'm not sure why they did like a super spray last summer on the waters. I saw them doing it. Uh, probably because they had to get rid of a bunch of stuff that they bought. They didn't know how to dispose of it without getting caught. So that's probably why that was done. It's uh, so somebody can make some money. The chemical salesman lines somebody's pocket. That's the only reason why this is happening. The tropical fruit people, if you're buying land here in Florida, can like really... Uh, they could turn Florida around. We, our community, our organic tropical fruit community could turn Florida's problem into a success. So, if you have to buy that land that was a previous citrus grove, you can fix it. And you just have to open your mouth about the spraying overhead of your organic property. <clears throat> going to take three years for it to become organic certified and hopefully by then you can get them to stop it and the drift won't be too strong people are going to open their eyes to what's going on i mean we kind of know now that the food is causing all these issues because they've killed all the microbes that grow in the food that come from the soil replaced them with their systemic uh, poisons. You can't wash this stuff off your food. It's inside the food. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, if your property has like those old citrus, you know what they are, the ditches every 40 feet or something like that, and then they plant the plants of citrus, but there might not be any citrus left on it. That seems to be what land is available and kind of affordable if you're younger. And I know a lot of the younger people that talk to me, they all want land, but they may not have the money right now, but you can like start at the bottom and trade and build up and until you can afford the, and until the property, your dream property comes available. That's a good way to make money. And we all started like buying up this orange, these old orange, vacant orange groves and told them not to spray overhead because you're organic. We could probably start turning around the the problems in Florida and show people that this could be a tropical fruit growing Eden. 
So this is that area that always flooded before and this you couldn't even tell see how you look at this and you just can't even tell but you know we got six inches of rain yesterday and it had been raining in inches for days before you know so it's this is the water table is super high right now so i'm going to walk over here and check these atamoya because the atamoya is over here and see if i have standing water and i only did the horn here i buried the horn below the skin so so far so good and I know this is a deep part, and no, no standing, oh, there's a little bit right there, but yeah, it's like two inches, but right next to it isn't. I think that's the area I've been walking on. I don't walk here very often, so I don't really have a trail, but I could see that that's where I've been walking, but so yeah, it fixed the standing water. in all areas. Uh, I'm sure that's attributable to the horn. It has to be. Because I know that the microorganisms that grow in the biodynamic horn that have been through, put through a anaerobic composting process below ground for six months, grow organisms that live in water, that can live in water. So it makes sense that it would fix the issues. Where's my freaking... Uh, Atamoya tree. There it is. So I love it. We have no standing water anywhere on our property except on deer trails or areas, trails that I've walked. But And it's very sh not deep. Here's that Atamoya tree. This has not been the best year for Atamoyas on my Geffners, but... That area that my Guffners are growing in has always been a trouble spot. Uh, it's like right off the road. Who knows what? Oh, these are looking good. But this tree that blew over on its own, it would be like uh, probably 15 feet. This is a new branch that's growing straight up. It blew over during a hurricane. It's been planted in the road. It's never been watered. And this is a highly degraded area originally, but now it obviously you can see it has all this stuff growing in it. So I would look for stuff growing on property. That's what I would do. Because the more stuff growing on your property is the more carbon that's in your soil, which is what you want. The atomoyas are looking good. They're getting close. Not the biggest atomoyas, but... Seems like there's quite a few of them. Here's another one. Oh, yeah, they're good. I'm just so paranoid that the, uh, these are priestly atomoyas. This is like one of my favorite, or is my favorite atomoya I've ever eaten. And it got very good taste. Don't have to pollinate them. Um, I think maybe the hawks got my bunnies that were living under here because I don't really see any rabbit habitat underneath here. Uh, sorry, little bunny that was living here, but maybe the, here's some more. Oh yeah, these are, these are coming along. So I will have enough seeds. I promised a friend of mine seeds, one of my subscribers. I love my subscribers. It's, uh, it's the international people are view this channel as much as the American, the United people from the United States, which I found fascinating. Um, so shout out to them. Uh, I love watching gardens from around the world and how people grow because I can identify with their growing methods because that's kind of the most similar to mine, especially places like India. And I mean, I got a lot of my knowledge from Indian natural farming. Uh, so it's, it's probably most strongly influenced me, that in biodynamics, I would say. So yeah, anyway, that was a video on land. I guess I should go all the way back because there is a ditch on our property, like the ditches that they put. Here's the where the tire was, there's like half inch standing water. There's where the tire was. 
There's where the tire was. Ground is very spongy. I'm just amazed that I've fixed, took six, almost six years to fix them. But I kind of didn't really know as much as I know now, because I learn every day. See, our, our pastures are full of weeds and we don't mow them and it has trees in there and weeds and turns out these weeds are how cows get their herbs that take care of the worms. They need a variety and not just sedge. So that's what I seem to see what everyone's growing in their pastures is sedge. They don't realize it because they mow them all the time, <clears throat> but that's what it is. Horses like sedge. My horses love sedge here. They'd eat it down to the ground. There's a little bit of standing water. This is, you know, look at all that clover there. Florida is so amazing that it's like the easiest spot in the world to, that I've, in the U.S., to grow organically, I guess it's the perfect temperature and it has the groundwater is at 72 degrees, which is a perfect temperature for biology. And it has a high water table and it's on calcium. That's why I know that Florida could, tropical fruit could cure organic, Florida organic tropical fruit could cure Florida of the ecological nightmare that we're in right now and boost tourism. Those freaking farming methods that, I'm not gonna say it, but we know who developed them and why. Uh, and, uh, you know, advising me to put 750 pounds of nitrogen on 50 mangoes on an acre is like, uh, they don't know how much biology can come from, or nitrogen can come from biology because it's never been studied. So that's why they don't talk about it. It's not because it doesn't, can't happen. It's because it's never been studied. So here's the ditch here. So that's the groundwater table. So the groundwater, I got stuck mowing this trail right there. So um, this is a ditch like those ditches they do for citrus. So, but when I moved here and this was lawn, the ditch after rains like this would be a 20 foot wide river across here. So that's what they look like when you mow them. So this is just the level of the groundwater. It's like, I would say, cause this is like, it's like five inches below the ground. So if you put a shovel in and plant something, the water's going to be full, of, or the hole's going to be full of water. But there's no standing water anymore. What's really bizarre is my neighbors, they like added all this fill. And I continued to mow. Now they have standing water three feet above our property. It's and where we don't have any, so. The living cover redistributes the water and manages it correctly. Knows how to move it around. It's a lot better than we do. <clears throat> anyway, that's front to back, our land and what I look for. Or what I would look for today if I had to buy a new piece of property. Have a good day. It's Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm.